Welcome back, everyone. OK, so in the last few lectures, we've been looking at balancing transformations. So those are coordinate transformations uh, from some original x coordinates into some new z coordinates so that my controllability and observability Gramians in the z coordinates, wc hat equals wo hat equals uh, a diagonal and hierarchically ordered matrix sigma. OK, so my, my controllability Gramian equals my observability Gramian equals a diagonal matrix where the L entries are going from biggest to smallest. OK, so now we're going to code this up in MATLAB. Um, again, just as an illustration, this is kind of the end figure that we're going to generate. We have our observability Gramian for our original system in blue here. So there's this really observable direction, and this one's not as observable. I have my red controllability Gramian. So again, uh, this direction is super controllable. This direction is barely controllable. But in these balanced coordinates, it, what we're going to do is we're going to find this T transform in these new coordinates Z, where I find um, a hierarchical coordinate system so that the first coordinate in this purple direction, this kind of direction here, is the most jointly controllable and observable direction. So this is a compromise between this Gramian and this Gramian, so this direction. And it tells me that if I wanted to truncate, if I only wanted a one-mode model, I would get rid of this direction because this is the least jointly controllable and observable. OK, so that's what we're going to do in MATLAB is cook up this balancing transformation uh, and balance these Gramians. OK, great. Uh, and you can do this at home. The script um, is online. Links to all the codes are available. This is also uh, in the book on data-driven science and engineering. OK, so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to cook up a system, a two-by-two two system with one input and one output, uh, no D matrix, no feed-through term, so an A, B, and C matrix. In MATLAB, it's easy to build a state space system with the SS command, so we're going to build a state space system. And I'm going to look at what the controllability and observability Gramians are uh, using this convenient gram command. OK, so I'm just going to run all of this, control, enter. OK, it's running. And now let's just verify that our controllability and observability Gramians are not equal. OK, so WC is this matrix not diagonal. OK, it's not a diagonal matrix, first of all. And then um, remember what it looks like. And then WO is not equal to that. In fact, it's almost opposite, right? Like this direction is more, uh, more observable, and this direction was more controllable. OK, so these are kind of those, those two ellipsoids. Now, plotting these things is kind of fun. So what I'm going to do to plot these Gramians, uh, I'm going to define basically a unit sphere or a circle in R2. And I'm going to map that circle through um, these, these controllability and observability Gramians. And remember, these Gramians are uh, positive semi-definite. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to map through the square root of the Gramian. This is just uh, for scaling, OK? And so my circle is going to turn into a controllability ellipse and an observability ellipse. And I'm then going to plot those ellipses. So that's all I'm doing here. OK, I've got my red uh, and blue uh, observability and controllability ellipses. So I'm just going to put this in the background and go back here. Now, that was just to get the controllability and observability in my original x coordinates. But what I want is I want controllability, I want this new coordinate system z where these are balanced and equal. So that's what we're going to do now. OK, and I uh, make it look cool by making my current axes and current figure color black background, OK, in case you want to make super cool black background figures. OK, so the great thing about MATLAB is that computing these balancing transformations is one line. This is super simple. I think one of the great things about this is that um, MATLAB's, uh, I think this is maybe the robust control toolbox or maybe the original control toolbox, essentially wraps Fortran code, uh, I think written by, by Peter Benner in, uh, in the 80s, if I'm not mistaken, called Slycott. And um, essentially, it wraps this super powerful Fortran code that does all of this numerical linear algebra, even for pretty large systems. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a balanced realization of our system. This is a built-in MATLAB command, ball rel balanced realization. And what it gives me is the balanced system and then these transformations T and the inverse transformation S is what I called it before. But they call it T inverse. Um, and I can't remember what G is, but if I was doing this, I'd, I'd give my, um, 
diagonal elements of sigma, probably. OK, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what the Gramians of this balance system are. Because in these balanced coordinates, these Gramians should be equal and diagonal. Then I'm going to um, run my circle through this coordinate system. And I can't just use BWC because I have to map into those coordinates and out of those coordinates with T and T inverse. So you can kind of go through the math and convince yourself that this is really how to draw these ellipses. But this is that ellipse from before. And then I'm going to plot it in purple, because it's supposed to be the compromise between my uh, red and blue controllability and observability ellipses. OK, that makes sense? Sup the, OK, takeaway, one line MATLAB command to balance the system. I run balrel on my system, and I get a balanced system and the uh, direct and inverse transforms. And all of this is just verifying that it gives me a balanced model. OK, so let's run this, Control Enter. and. A couple things. First of all, in my command window, I plotted the uh, controllability, the BWC. This is my balanced uh, controllability Gramian. OK, 1.9439 and 0.32, so it's diagonal. And now I'm going to plot my balanced observability Gramian. And it's the same. It's exactly the same. These little minuses popped up because those are 0, plus or minus, something really, really small. But basically, my balanced uh, controllability and observability Gramians are equal and diagonal. And what's really cool, notice that this first diagonal entry is a lot bigger than my second diagonal entry. That means this one's a lot more important for control, uh, controllability and observability. So this one you know, is more than five or six times more important than this one. So if I wanted to only pick one state, I'd pick the Z1 coordinate and I'd throw away the Z2 coordinate. OK, so then remember I plotted. Uh, my original observability and controllability Gramians in blue and red. Now what I'm doing is I'm plotting in these balance coordinates. So I map into Z coordinates. I plot my ellipse, and then I map out to show it in the X coordinates. And I get this, this nice purple ellipsoid, which balances the trade-offs between good observability and good controllability. Okay? Pretty simple, really. Um, you can do this to much larger systems. I'm showing you this on a 2 by 2 system just so we can plot everything and see it and play around with it. But you can imagine that these ellipsoids in three dimensions might look like an M&M or um, you know, a football or something like that. In 10 dimensions, they're going to be this hyper ellipsoid. And in 1,000 dimensions, you know, everything generalizes. So you still get these ellipsoids. You still get preferred directions. You still get trade-offs between controllability and observability. So that's all really, really interesting. Easy to plot, even easier to compute. Um, notice that like all of my commands here are just building the matrices, building the system, and plotting one line for balancing your system. Okay, and if you're interested, I actually did write a code that allows you to manually compute these balancing transformations. Remember, we, um, if you remember from before, what we actually did was we took the original Gramians WC uh, times WO times T equals T sigma squared. And if I remember, this was an unscaled set of eigenvectors t. And then we went through some scaling to find uh, the scaled coordinate transformation t that, that exactly balances and diagonalizes these Gramians. And that's what this code here does. Okay, So I basically take the eigen decomposition of this product here. That gives me t unscaled and a diagonal matrix. That's sigma squared. And then I go through all of the business of building um, these Gramians and scaling t and then uh, you can convince yourself through the end of this that this t is the same as you get with the ball rail command. I'm not going to run it. You can run it. Um, all the codes are online. Now, the upshot, of course, is I'm just going to run this again. Yeah, the upshot is one line MATLAB command. I can take a system that has some preferred observability directions, other preferred controllability directions, and what it will do is it will uh, automatically, just using linear algebra, find a hierarchy of most to least jointly controllable and observable modes. Why is that important? This is important because if I have a million dimensional system and I want to control it really fast, there's fast time scales and I have to control it super fast, then I need to approximate that million dimensional system with the best possible 5 or 10 or 20 dimensional system that I can actually simulate and control online. And so what this does is this gives me a principled approach to pruning down that very high dimensional state space x 
into a hierarchy of the most to least important uh, coordinates in Z. So I can pick the first five coordinates of Z, the first 10 coordinates of Z, and every time I add more, I'm kind of guaranteed to be capturing the next most controllable and observable states. Okay, um, that's it for now. Thank you.